Hello, YouTube world. Thanks for checking in to Cali's Take. Today's topic of the day, are the LA Clippers the best team in the Western Conference? Now, this is your first time to the channel. Please like, subscribe, leave any comments, and please hit the notification bell to get the newest videos first. Now, let's just jump right into it. You know, we talk about the LA Clippers. We talk about a team who had failures. A team who disappointed a lot of us last year. A team who a lot of people considered to be <clears throat> one of, if not the best team in the West. If not the NBA. But last year they came up short against the Denver Nuggets. You know, Now we all know Paul George didn't play his best. And we know Kawhi didn't play his best in the Game 7. But at the same time, this year they look a little bit better. They look a little bit more formidable. Like last year when we looked at the LA Clippers, they looked like uh, a team with just a bunch of talent and no camaraderie. And when you look at a team like that, is that's the reason why they lost in the bubble. That's the reason why they didn't, they weren't together when they needed to be. There wasn't no adjustments made on the coaching end. It wasn't no adjustments made on the floor. It wasn't enough, probably enough talking on defense. And, um, you know, Kawhi Leonard not being a talkative leader that he is, he's just a leader by example. It didn't really make anything any better. And then when you add, Paul George with the mental issues and mental states that he was in. Um, it didn't really help the Clippers at all. Um, but hopefully, like I said, um, going forward this year, it'd be a lot different. Now, so far, Paul George has played really good. So far, Paul George has been <clears throat> really a surprise this season so far. And, uh, you know, Kawhi is uh, playing good as well. Can't definitely not forget him because, you know, he's the one who actually is the best player on the team. And he's the one who actually can help them get to a championship. Kawhi's championship experience, Kawhi's knowledge from what t Greg Popovich has taught him on the Spurs, Kawhi knowing the game from a different perspective is something that they need to win a championship. So he has to be their best player to win a championship. And Paul George has to understand he's the number two best player for them to win a championship. As long as both players know that going into the playoffs and as long as the other role players know their role, I don't really see too many issues for the L.A. Clippers. I mean, now, to me personally, um, to be where the Lakers are as far as winning a championship, they were together. They were together in the bubble. LeBron rallied the troops. LeBron, you know what I'm saying, last year had the team ready to go. He had everybody just ready to play. And that's exactly what leaders are supposed to do. And really, that's exactly what Kawhi Leonard is supposed to do. I know Kawhi Leonard is quiet and leads by example. But at the same time, you definitely have to get your guys going and get them ready and keep them motivated. Because some guys are not self-starters. Some players are just started or ignited by the energy of the team and the energy of the leader. You know, so um, I definitely think um, there's some improvements that can be done there. But as far as what I've seen so far this year, why not rate the Clippers as one of the, the best teams in the NBA? Right? Why not rate them as the best team in the Western Conference? I mean, L.A. Lakers, I mean, they beat them. And uh, I look at L.A. last night, you know, against the Golden State Warriors. They lose to them. Now, I know that the Clippers lost to the uh Golden State Warriors about a week ago, but they did beat the Warriors a couple days before that, I believe, on their home floor. So they do have a victory over the Warriors. I'm not sure the Lakers have a victory over the Warriors yet. I believe they only played them once, which was last night, and the Warriors got that victory. And honestly, I don't even know how they won because Stephen Curry didn't shoot well. He did have 26 points, but he wasn't. It wasn't a good shooting. I believe he was like three for 12 from the arc. Um, you know, Kelly Oubre is just you know just atrocious on uh, shooting. His defense is good. You know, he, he brings energy, but shooting wise, I mean, you're definitely, you're definitely missing Clay Thompson. And I think it's really starting to show with that team and um, you know, but they're still pulling together wins and they're still, t they're still keeping it together. So, you know, kudos to them. But at the same time, like I said, um, you know, the Clippers have, you know, they've beaten the Lakers, they've beaten the Nuggets um, they've beaten the Warriors, you know, and uh, the Phoenix Suns, you know, they've beaten the top teams in the West so far, you know, so um, definitely they're looking in the right direction. And uh, I think the more healthier they stay and more camaraderie they get, you know, I think they'll be a formidable team. And I think they definitely can be or should be looked at as the best team in the Western Conference, because when you look at their roster from top to bottom, they may not have a dynamic point guard as in like, you know, a Chris Paul or you know, or maybe not dynamic, but they don't have a point guard as in somebody who could really control the offense like a Chris Paul, you know, or a Rondo or something like that. But at the same time, they do have 
Patrick Beverly. Uh, I don't want to give Patrick Beverly. I don't. I mean, I don't want to shoot Patrick Beverly down. He, he, he's not a bad point guard. But he's not the point guard I would think they need to win a championship. But at the same time, you know, with a mixture between him and I believe, well, honestly, I I, I don't know. Reggie Jackson, I mean, I feel like Reggie Jackson's up and down. You know, I feel like he can have a good moment, but I feel like I feel like he can also like struggle to really bad, you know what I'm saying? But um between the both of them, I feel like, you know, they uh balance each other out. So I feel like that can help the Clippers some. But I think a lot of people are not talking about the Nicholas Batum pickup, which was huge. Um I didn't even know Nicholas Batum still could play. You know, I mean I I didn't I haven't seen him in a few years. Uh, I think he was on the Charlotte Hornets before the Clippers, and he really wasn't playing any games hardly. Um, and the Serge Ibaka pickup was huge, too, because now you have a stretch big who can shoot the three and who can go in the paint and defend at a high level at that still. So, I mean, when you have that specifically, you're you, you're going to improve as a team. And I think Ty Lue has the offense going pretty good right now. Like I said, PG's flowing really good. You know, Kawhi's flowing really good. You know, Kawhi's getting more assists a game now. And they're enjoying how they're playing. And I really think that's a good thing. You know, uh, the, the biggest problem they had last year, I believe, is they didn't have the camaraderie. They didn't have enough chemistry. They didn't play together long enough. They took games off in practice for, as far as we know, you know, Kawhi Leonard did the load management, which he's made famous along with uh, his team, the Spurs back in the day when they started that, you know, so um, I just think the camaraderie wasn't there. I think they wasn't exactly where they're supposed to be. I didn't think they were hitting on, I would say, all cylinders, I would say. I mean, they were they were a good team, you know, in the playoffs, but I didn't think they was a great team. I personally think they should have lost to the Dallas Mavericks if it wasn't for Kawhi, you know, playing, dropping like 30 points a game. You know, I, don't, I think they would have lost to the Mavericks, you know, but at the same time, it's like, you know, this year is the year they have to show and tell. Now, can they win a championship with a team that they have constructed? Yes, they can. But it's going to take a, a maximum effort from every player. And every player has to understand their role. Every player has to know what they're supposed to do. Every player has to remember to execute the plan when they go into the games. You're going to get down sometime. You're going to you're gonna be down 10, 15, 20 points. Or you're going to be up. Or you might be up 2-1 in a series when the playoff starts. But you have to keep your composure and you have to realize every game counts and every possession counts when you get to the playoffs. Now, they could just mold this and, and you know compartmentalize all this up and put it into PG's brain so Paul George can remember this when the playoffs. Come, I think they'll be a really good team. I think they'll be a team to be reckoned with. I think a lot of people will actually understand that this team is actually good enough to win the championship. And to be honest, you know, when they play the Lakers, you know, if they do play the Lakers in the playoffs, hopefully they do this time. I think it's I think they're a matchup nightmare for the Lakers. And I think a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that. Uh the Lakers really don't have what they have. Now the Lakers gave up. Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee, now you have no size in the paint. And Marc Gasol is just not the defensive player he used to be. So now you're looking at a situation where, you know, the, the Lakers are going to have to scramble for players. And if they don't make a trade or anything like that, I mean, the Clippers are probably just, I, I mean, if the Clippers play the Lakers in a seven-game series, um, it probably will go seven games, of course, but um, ultimately, I, I feel like the Clippers might have the edge this year specifically because they're not undersized in the paint. Last year, they were undersized with um, Montrez. Montrez Harrell is a good player, but he's undersized and he can't contend with bigger players. So, like I said, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the first matchup, you know, the Clippers won that, of course, opening night, but um, we'll see how it goes going forward. But uh, right now, the Clippers are soaring. A lot of people are not speaking about them as much. They're kind of under the radar, maybe the radar, maybe a little bit, but I mean, they're soaring right now. They're flying high, you know what I'm saying? They're doing. You know they're they're winning. They're 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 playing pretty good basketball. And Ty Lue have to give him some credit so far in the 15 game season that we've uh, come to now. Uh, the Clippers look pretty good, you know, and they look they look like they're getting more comfortable. And now the fact that Kawhi Leonard is decided to play back to back games, I feel like that's going to help them even more. You know, going into the later part of the season, playoffs and all that. And um, you know, like I said. Depending on health, if they all stay together and play hard the way they're playing now and playing together, I mean, sky's the limit for them when they get to the playoffs. Because now, like I said, they got some pieces that's added that's really helped their, their value. And when they play teams like Denver, they have somebody who can switch on them now. Now, Jokic is going to have to be guarded by 
Serge Ibaka. And Serge Ibaka is a lot better defender than uh, Zubak, the guy they have uh, coming off the bench on the Clippers. So I feel like they're upgrading in some areas, and I feel like they're definitely a formidable team. And I feel like a lot of people should start looking at them as one of, if not the best team in the Western Conference, because like I said, they've beaten the top teams already, and they've shown that they're actually, you know, for real or wanting to be for real this year, at least in the regular season. We have to see how the playoffs go whenever that gets here. But at the same time, right now, I think they're a pretty good team, and I think a lot of people need to uh, understand what they're doing and how you know how good they're playing right now. So, hey, you know, with that being said, I understand what happened last year is what happened, but you know they got to make a better adjustments this year and they got to go out and prove to everybody that they're better than what they were last year. It's just as simple as that. I mean, PG, no excuses because you weren't you weren't talking about mental health when you was up three one against a Denver Nugget team that you should beat. Kawhi Leonard was playing good up until that point, but he had one bad game, which is the game seven. And I'm not going to blame it all on Kawhi either because, you know, Kawhi did wear down in that series, you know, because he carried them pretty much the first series. And then he came to the second series and just, you know, he just started wearing down because, you know, his secondary help, his Robin to Batman, uh, his Robin didn't show up, you know, and Paul George didn't show up. And we all know that. But um, hopefully this year, you know, they can rectify things and make things better. And we'll see how it goes from here. But I mean, hey, you know what I'm saying? Until next time.